Welcome back to another episode of Water Park Rangers Let's Play Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets. In the last episode, we finally finished the restricted section and got Hogwarts of History to learn about the Chamber of Secrets. And we got the new spell Scourge, which I like to call OxyClean. And it helps get rid of these green barriers of ectoplasm, as you can see. So first things first, this morning we're just going around on our routine, collect whatever new treasure chests we can. Number 71, Queen Maeve. And we just got a new life upgrade. Also, the interesting thing about that card is that I kind of recognize the name. Unless I'm mistaken, I'm pretty sure that character is mentioned in um, Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet. Because some of these wizard cards, although a lot of them are exclusive for the Harry Potter uh, universe, are actually real. And by that I mean basically they're featured in, in other kinds of literature. Like, for instance, Merlin that we got. The very first card I think we got was Merlin. Or one of the first, anyway. Back in the borough. Number 99, Daisy Dodderidge. First landlady is a Leaky Cauldron. Oh, one thing, uh, the Leaky Cauldron maybe remember, and I'll get, to, I'll get back to this on just a second, but I have to mention, I've recently looked on Game FAQs, uh, this little chart that basically tells you how to find the wizard cards, and it's really helpful. But the thing about it is that now I realize that I've actually missed one back at the Leaky Cauldron, and that might be difficult if we're planning on getting 100%. And I said 100% we can't do because of the GBA connectivity, but it turns out I was being an idiot because the GBA connectivity is just doubles of cards that you can already get in the game. So maybe there's still a chance of us getting 100%. We'll have to find that later. I'd really like to try and get 101 wizard cards. I've never done that before. Number 93, Heathcote Barbary. We're in Lockhart's uh, office right now, as you can tell. But the sad thing is, and I say this is sad, I don't, I don't know, I like Lockhart, like, not in the book so much, but I love the actor who plays him uh, in the movie, he's hilarious, and in this game, he's just such a blithering idiot, he just like stands there with a stupid grit on his face the whole time. But unfortunately, from this point on, we're just gonna get annoying teachers who I don't really like. Well, that's not entirely true, but I don't like Professor McGonagall, I don't like her voice actor in this game either. I mean, most of the voice actors in this game do a pretty good job. They don't always sound authentic, though. McGonagall's one of those times. So we just walk through here, and there's there's no prefix here during the day. Because there's really no point to stop Harry from sneaking around in broad daylight to go to the library. What are they going to do? Stop him from learning? All the literature has now been banned at Hogwarts. You're not allowed to go to the library. So there's some more of these boundaries put up. But with our spells, we can take out the ones that we can. That still leaves a few more. And that's just kind of like a, a hint as to what kinds of spells we'll be finding. Not really good ones. Just obscure ones I don't want to spoil. But we do get some interesting spells, and we're going to try and get one today. Um, after we finish up here. There's a few different treasure chests to pick. And we'll try and avoid the ghosts while we do. What always confused me is this one here holds an owl tree. But by this point in the game, you can't find any more pedestals to give it to Hedwig. So I think it's just there to fill up one of the item slots on your menu screen. Number 10, Burdock Muldoon. First page of the Folio Magi is getting pretty close to complete at this point. Alright, before we leave the library, there's one more thing I want to show. And it's the, um... The cauldron in this other room. You might remember if you saw the previous episode, which hopefully you have been watching, because it's pretty important if you want to know exactly what's going on, is that we got a vial last night, and uh, it's going to help us to get this wig and weld and carry an extra batch of it around. Because where we're going today is a, a new challenge chamber. And in my opinion, I personally think, because I've had bad experiences with it in the past, you can lose a lot more HP in it than a few of the others. It's not like a huge difficulty spike, but the game does get tougher. And if you were playing this normally, remember this the halfway point has just been finished. That was a restricted section. So the challenges do amp up a little bit. And there's our lost and found item. Uh, that telescope. I've been pretty good at 
a working out a pattern for getting the lost and found items in the mornings and stuff. But by the end of the game, we might just have to get a few in, uh, quick, su quick su succession. Good. Number 84, Roland, Roland Keg. Keg. What is Gobstones, anyway? I mean, I guess I could look it up, but knowing nothing about it and just hearing about it, is this supposed to be some kind of bubblegum battle or something? Waiting for us, Harry. Let's, go in. Let's go in. Well, I guess we have no choice. Good morning. Today we shall learn the transfiguration spell known as Avifors. Avifors will allow you to transform small objects, such as the parts of this statue, into birds. This is achieved like so. Avifors! Avifors! You will now see that a crawl space has been revealed in the wall. Beyond this is the Avifors challenge. Mr. Potter, come forward, please. Yes, Professor? The Avifor spellbook is located on the other side of this crawl space. Find it, and the spell will be yours. You must then return here to the classroom. Yes, Professor. Off you go. Okay, here comes another one of the parts of the game that I don't really like. There are a few parts of this game which I just don't like. It's looking ominous already. You'll see why I hate this place. It's pretty easy to tell. Also, the spell you get in it is probably, now that I'm thinking about it, one of the least used in the entire game. I mean, it is interesting. You saw what she mentioned Avifors could do earlier. The truth is, that's a little bit of a false advertising. It only works on one certain type of small object. These weird rocks. You'll see. So, first things first, you want to get rid of this, uh, the ectoplasm. But there are plenty of ghosts behind them. I absolutely detest ghosts. Look, you just have to keep dodging them. And then, even worse, they just keep one trolling this room. And the bad news is that by opening up these gates, by hitting the switches, you're in turn releasing more ghosts into the center room, which are going to make your life difficult. Usually, if you're right in front of them, they will charge you, but you've seen that before. Challenge chambers are usually symmetrical in one way or another. Typically, um, the last puzzle is uh, located in the first room. You saw that with the Expelliarmus challenge chamber briefly, because we had to drop the, um, the spike ball into that central fire to move through. Let's see, what next? There's a little switch there on the floor. If you hit it, it opens up the door that you came through, but it closes if something's not weighing it down, so obviously you have to find something to put on that switch, but that won't come until later. So for now, we've uh, hit those two switches and opened up this um, extra hallway to come through. And it's led us to a door and the next room in this dungeon. This room gets tougher than what it looks like at first. And like the last room, progressing here will make it dangerous for you later. Because look, we just released three ghosts, and that's going to make this room a little bit of a pain. Maybe I should use Lumos. Also, when using Lumos, do not miss this wizard card if you're going for 100%. Because I know for a fact, well, I'm pretty sure, if you miss this one, that there's a good chance you might never be able to get it again. Number 85, Blenheim Store. Because you just can't get back into the, uh, the challenge chamber later. You can't revisit these challenges. Wow, so there are dead people in this dungeon. Well, I, I know there are ghosts, but now I think we have the assurance that this is an incredibly dangerous place to be. Thanks, Professor McGonagall. We know you're looking out for your students. Harry's even in your house. Okay, so you just have to avoid these ghosts. First, dodge them, because they're going to be patrolling the perimeter. Once they're out of the way, try and leap over and grab them to the ledge. Harry's very good at falling at this part. Wow! Like I said, Harry is very good at falling and being an absolute failure at this part. That's not me, that's Harry's fault. This is one of the most annoying platform sections of the game. And it's good to have a lot of Wiganweld, so 
if you screw up here, you can heal yourself. If you lose the Wigan Weld, there's a good chance that this can be incredibly difficult to finish without the right HP replenishing stuff. If you don't jump at that perfect angle, Harry will always just fall down to the floor. And plus, the camera doesn't make it easy either. I've been trying really hard this whole time um, up here to try and adjust the camera properly so that I can time my jumps and get the angle correct. But it's just not easy. The camera's just not cooperative when you're so close to a wall. And the ghosts just don't give up either. You can dodge the ghosts if you um, sneak on the wall at the right time. The animation will make it so that Harry is somehow defended. Or climbing up, and then he doesn't get hit by the ghosts. So that jump is too hard to make. It might not be obvious at first, but you do have to wall sneak to get across. Just don't let go until you're sure you're on the platform. Okay, now that looks like a normal jump right there. Perfect. One more. Okay, we're halfway across the room. That looks like a jump. I thought it was a sneak at first. So let's try and lure this ghost out of the way and then jump. Okay, we got the angle right even though the camera was so uncooperative. That's another jump. This has to be a wall sneak. Oh, we couldn't dodge that time, though. Wow. <laughs> These ghosts just don't stop coming. Okay, careful here. There's one more jump. Very dangerous, but we made it. There's one more ghost behind the scourge wall, of course, but it's not going to be easy to dodge. Okay, so this next room, this is where the Avifor's spellbook is located, and you're going to have to use it to escape the room as well. As with all new spells that you find, as soon as you find them, you're going to have to use them to escape from your current situation. A few more switches like the ones before that you need to hold down, so Avifor's will come into play with that. It's a magical Avifor's spellbook. So next episode, because we're running a little bit low on time here, or at least for my purposes, you're going to get to see what Avifors can do, and we will finish this challenge chamber and move on to whatever Harry's classes have next for him. So, see you then.